the Senate floor for my 34th edition of Waste of the Week. As you know, Ms. President, I do these speeches each week to highlight waste, fraud, and abuse in simple ways that we can save the taxpayers' dollars from being misused. Last year, in my 18th Waste of the Week speech, I detailed an investigation by the Nonpartisan Government Accountability Office that discovered fraudulent applications were being accepted by healthcare.gov, that's the government website for choosing Obamacare plans. I discussed the waste, fraud, and abuse of Obamacare subsidies that were being awarded to fraudulent applicants. As part of that investigation, General Accountability Office investigators purposefully submitted 12 fraudulent applications. They wanted to test the system. They wanted to see how well the system works. So they drew up 12 deliberately fraudulent applications just to see how, what, what the response would be. They submitted it to healthcare.gov. 11 of them came back as approved. Only one was called out for saying, wait a minute, we didn't have the appropriate information or we didn't do the fact checking. Uh, one of those, they said, uh, this one doesn't match. But 11 apparently weren't even fact checked. And 11 of them came back. Now the General Accountability Office said, I think uh, this is uh, maybe the canary in the coal mine. Uh, this ought to be a signal that this program is being abused. And when 11 out of 12 come back with this acceptable stamp on, uh, for approval, and then the subsidies given to the, the fraudulent individuals, um, you would think that the government would take notice of this and simply say, we gotta get a, get a hold of this. Now, uh, after the investigation, after this was made public, not just by me and the floor here of the United States Senate, uh, it ought to have been embarrassing to the agencies that are handling this, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Disbursement. Uh, you would think that they would jump on this. Uh, if I were heading up this agency, if I had anything to do with this at all, I would either be firing somebody or I would be putting reforms in place to make sure this never happened again. You would think that this report would have gotten some kind of action. But this week, the General Accountability Office released a new report detailing how this Obama administration continues to take, and they, this is their words, take a passive approach to dealing with the potential, what they say is potential fraud in the Obamacare program. The GAO report outlines how healthcare.gov itself is still, they say, still plagued by serious operational problems that lead to fraud and abuse. They found that in 1914, over 4 million Obamacare applicants received a total of, get this, $1.7 billion in taxpayer subsidies despite these unresolved documentation errors. And what this means is that the healthcare.gov site is allowing people to sign up for and receive Obamacare benefits without proper verification. And when, you, when you've had a previous investigation that said 11 out of 12, more than 90% of the applications were stamped approved and subsidies paid without verification or with faulty verification, you would have think they would have by now cleaned this up. Hundreds of thousands of people have been able to get their Obamacare applications approved without having their eligibility verified. That's become clear. As GAO investigators bluntly stated in the report, healthcare.gov is, and I quote, is at risk of granting eligibility to and making subsidy payments on behalf of individuals who are unable, excuse me, ineligible to enroll. GAO said one of the biggest problems with healthcare.gov is that the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, called CMS, which is responsible for the oversight and management of Obamacare, 
did not resolve Social Security number inconsistencies for thousands of applications. When you submit your identity, you give the Social Security number, and it goes to CMS. CMS is supposed to check this to see if it's a legitimate Social Security number, and if it isn't, they obviously cannot or should not issue uh, the subsidy and approve the application. But instead, CMS approved subsidized coverage without securing those numbers from the applicants, potentially allowing access to illegal immigrants or other in, uh, eligible individuals. So word gets around, hey, you don't even need to put your Social Security number on there or put a false Social Security number on there. You're going to get the subsidy. This is how your government is spending your tax dollars in an outrageous way to pump up the Obamacare, and we keep hearing the White House touting the fact that millions are signing up for this. Of course they are. Millions are signing up for this because whether they're eligible or not, they're getting a subsidy. Who wouldn't want to get a check from the government every month for something when, that's, but it's done through fraud, it's done through waste, it's done through something that hasn't been documented. <laughs> People have to realize, un under Obamacare, you have to be a citizen or legal resident and fall within a certain income range. And healthcare.gov is supposed to verify all this when you sign up. But the GAO found that the program does not check new applications against existing approved applications. And the resulting failure is that multiple people have been approved for benefits while using the same Social Security number. So here's another situation. Not only are people using false Social Security numbers or don't have Social Security numbers or put it on the application and they're still getting subsidies, but a lot of people are using the same Social Security number. Now, you know, this is not the era of having mountains of paperwork stored in warehouses around Washington, D.C. because the agencies have been flooded with paper applications. This is an age of computerizing and digitizing all of this information, so all you have to do is push a button to find out whether that's a legitimate Social Security number or whether it has a Social Security number. I mean, how hard is it? To make matters worse now, we've learned that in thousands of Obamacare applications, it wasn't even clear if the beneficiary was serving a prison sentence. The law basically says you're not eligible for this if you're serving a prison, prison sentence. GAO found that the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services ignored many opportunities, they said, for reducing Obamacare fraud and says that CMS foregoes information that could suggest potential program issues of potential vulnerabilities, such as those receiving benefits while they're imprisoned. Basically, it appears that CMS is willing to look the other way. Maybe they were ordered. Maybe they're just doing it, or maybe they're just purely incompetent. But they're looking the other way as the president continues to tout the benefits of his law. And don't worry, we have verification before we use up and buy, waste any taxpayer's money and think what a wonderful thing this is. If, that wasn't, if this isn't bad enough, GAO also found that CMS actually knew that millions of applicants were potentially fraudulent and still approve the applications. Yeah, I'm not making this up. We have information here provided by G General Accountability Office that the Center for Medicaid and Medicare knew about these fraudulent th uh, uh, practices. So they can couldn't plead, well, we didn't know this was happening or this was a computer glitch or we're just so overwhelmed with paperwork or applications that uh, we can't handle it all. No, they knew about it. They knew it was happening and yet they still haven't cleared it up. And now what really drives you up the wall, and it's no wonder the American people are so unbelievably frustrated with this government and have deemed that this government is simply wasting their tax dollars is the most bureaucratic mess they've ever seen, and they're paying for it. It does just practically make you want to scream CMS told GAO, 
Quote, they currently do not plan to take any actions on individuals with unresolved incarceration or social security number inconsistencies. Does anybody find that outrageous? You know that there's a problem. You're documented that there's a problem. But we currently are not willing to undertake any kind of reforms or action to deal with this situation. To address this mess, I'll introduce legislation that will mandate the CMS to recoup all improperly paid subsidies. And I'm going to continue to press the agency to take actions to enforce the existing requirements. What does it take to get the Congress to take the steps to insist that these agencies that have been entrusted with taxpayer money to carry out their programs act in such a cavalier, dismissive way. What does it take? Well, I guess what it takes is, is what's happening in our election process right now. And that is the demonstration of the absolute, we've had enough, we're blazing mad, and uh, we ought to tear the place down and start all over because this behemoth of a dysfunctional government that continues to rob the taxpayer of hard-earned money. And it's hard to earn money these days with this tepid recovery of less than 1% that's not providing job opportunities for people despite all the best efforts of this administration. Kind of reminds you back of when this thing was being debated in the House of Representatives and the then Speaker of the House said, well, you know, we have to pass this bill uh, so that we can find out what's in it. Well, Ms. Former Speaker of the House of Representatives, we're finding out not only what's in this bill, but we're also finding out how this bureaucratic excuse for an efficient, effective government is handling the implementation of this and the enforce enforcement of this to ensure that waste, fraud, and abuse is not occurring. So once again, I'm down here adding to the ever-growing amount of money that falls under the documented, the documented waste, fraud, and abuse uh, this government is doing relative to the taxpayer money. Today, we stand at a level of $157 billion of documented waste, fraud, and abuse, and we're just scratching the surface. I probably could come down here every hour of every day the Senate is in session and point out another waste of taxpayer money. When are we going to step up to the plate and stop this charade that's happening here? When are we going to deal with this problem? I'm urging my colleagues to support my efforts and other efforts to try to at least, at least, address known documented problems of waste, fraud, and abuse. Mr. Secretary, I 